Hello and thank you for pressing that play button to watch this video very very quickly. I'm Clive from Clive's Art. There are other playlists available for you. Just need to click on these buttons below and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed for regular updates and uploads. And you can join me on Facebook where I give regular updates again and give you little snippets of things before they are actually published. So thank you very much. Please join my channel and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hello and welcome. My name is Clive from Clive's Art. And if you haven't seen any of my videos before, please check out the links below. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. And follow me on Facebook, yes. Okay, so what are we going to do today? Um, well, I've had a few emails. i got a student as well has asked me these questions. And um, I think it's time I actually covered this. And that is um, perspective. You know, how do you put um, a painting or a drawing together? You know, people struggle with perspective. And it's something that we all see in everyday life. And um, we don't give it a second thought. No, we don't. So when we come to paint the painting, it all goes out of proportion and um, we get the foreground wrong and we distance and depth and perception basically. Um, so perspective, this is how I was taught perspective. Let me just put my pens down. You want to come a bit closer. So basically this is the first thing I, I had. I can remember as far as perspective is concerned is you've got a horizon line if you would look at anything it's always got a center line whether it's up there or down there there's always an, a, 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 an horizon line there somewhere and we would this is how I was taught to draw a box and then your vanishing point would be there. So we connect your lines up. These are vanishing point lines, so they get erased. Okay. So then we draw our vertical lines in and just pretend that they're in the background. So, you see a main line. So, we erase these lines because they're no longer required. So, if we shade this in, shade this side in. I'll do this in a different colour so you can see it. So this box or building is perfectly in perspective to that point there. That's your vanishing point. These are um, vanishing lines, so that's your building and that's your perspective there. So everything on this side can go down in perspective to that point there. So if this was a street, let me put this ruler down. This could be a street of houses or a couple of houses on the street. And again, so that's all in perspective. You can see how it's going down into the distance, and of course, 
make it be smaller and smaller and smaller. That's one point perspective. I'm going to leave it at that because it, it gets a bit complicated and I need to explain a few things to you. Because there's things called planes as well and they're not... Um, those type of planes that fly in the sky, they're planes. Everything is on a plane. Everything's on a line then. That's a, that's a line there. That's what they call a plane line. Okay, An horizon line. It's all basically the same. So I'll show you how to build this up slowly. But what I want to do is show you this. <coughs> so basically I've got a little trick at my sleeve. You know my glass mixing palette, that big one I use in old picture frame. When I put a picture in there, I'm going to use it to show you perspective and planes. And it's quite simple if you see it done this way. But it's not as simple as if you're reading out of a book or you're just learning the old fashioned way. It's better to see it than try and imagine it. This is my experience with my students. So when I've shown them this, they pick it up like that. But if I show them just drawing on like I did previously, it doesn't seem to sink in. Don't know why, it just doesn't. So I hope this is going to help you. And this is very, very basic. Okay, so let's have a look at the painting I've got in my picture frame. Now please excuse the crudity of this because it is filmed over my left shoulder. But I want to show you something. Everything in this particular painting has got a vanishing point. The trees are going into the distance. That gentleman has been walking down the road. So he, was, he started here. If he was here, he'd be about six foot tall. There you go. Because he's twice as high as that fence. So he'd have been taller here. If, I was, if, if he was going to be painted in the painting, he'd be that tall there. Or he'd be that tall there because as he's walking down the road he's going to a vanishing point. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay so let's get rid of Bob. I forget about Bob at the moment. This house is basically a couple of squares. Now this house here is going to another vanishing point. So everything on this plane or this point is all going down. It's a bit wonky. Let's do that again. This house has got its own vanishing point this way. Because it looks as if it's on a bit of a tilt. So that's most probably got a vanishing point down there. But we'll forget about them lines at the moment. I don't want to overcomplicate this if I can. Okay. There's a vanishing point here somewhere. So this house when the artist painted this, he had to take these lines to a vanishing point to get the perspective right. Even down to the chimney and the chimney pot. They're all going down and even this there would be going down to a vanishing point. The picket fence is going down to the same vanishing point by the looks of it. And this house here would be going down to a vanishing point over there somewhere by the looks of it. There we go. 
you can see everything is following that line even the road is going down but it's always smaller in the distance and the cameras are really wide in the foreground when you're painting rivers and roads and that type of stuff you've got to remember that if that's coming into the foreground of the painting it's got to be let's just tilt this down oops it's got to be a lot it's look that's taking up nearly the whole of the front of the painting look, the way to that road there and even these tracks have got following the same line and that's basically perspective so you can have multiple points in in a painting called vanishing points but everything has got to follow those rules in order to look right but the other thing we've got to bear in mind is this everything has got a plane I don't mean the things that fly around in the sky that gentleman there is on a line these trees are on a line this house is on a line the fence posts there are on a line that lady standing in the doorway the top of her head is on the line this house is on another line and these are called plane lines so, so what I'm saying is this don't overcomplicate it. Just remember that we'll put an horizon line in. I see a horizon line. Everything you put in, if you're going to draw buildings or something like that, then you've got to make sure they follow perspective. Otherwise, they just won't look right. And that's all perspective is. It's giving you the, the depth of a painting. So that's that's all you need to know really. Um, I suggest you get on to maybe YouTube or pick up a book and, and study that if you want to or just get a painting and do exactly what I've just done. Stick it behind a bit of glass, get a pen and try and work it, work it out for yourself and it gives you more practice. The other thing I gotta say is, nearly every well, every landscape, obviously, even when it's a seascape or whatever, has got to have an horizon line. It's a central line. It could be slightly above centre or below centre. It doesn't matter. But everything on this painting has got to sit on a line. This lady's head follows a line. This house follows a line. Every one of these picket fences follows a line. And these are all called planes. Planes. Everything sits on the plane. So, very quickly and simply, we go back to our fence post. If this fence post is three foot, everything on that plane has got to be Every fence, fence post on that plane has got to be three foot. It can't be smaller or bigger, really, if you think about it. Right? Unless you want to draw a broken one or something like that. But what I'm trying to say is, everything as a plane, everything sits on a plane. So we've got lines going that way. And we've also got vanishing points going that way. So you can get as complicated as you want. And I don't overcomplicate anything. Basically, all I'm saying is this. Get outside and study how things are. We, when we practice in and when we've started out, we don't, we don't observe enough. We don't observe enough. Look at paintings. Look how they're built. Look at the angles of these, these buildings are going to. And... It's self-explanatory, really, if you think about it. All you've got to do is just draw the lines 
and this is a great way to learn how to draw is by getting some of these dry white markers and going over on a piece of glass and if you've never if you've never drawn before you begin to realize there's only about four or five basic shapes in, that exist in the world and um, you know but I can cover that if if you really want me to because we got let's have a quick look because then I'll show you what I mean I don't know where you're sitting at the moment watching this but have a look around you you know you can see triangles or cones the chimney pot then is a cylinder isn't it the coffee cup is a cylinder you've got squares oh look squares or cubes if you look at this It's a cube. Let's see what else we can find in there. Okay. Um, well, that's a tr see the tree trunk really. If you think about it, is a cylinder, isn't it? See that? Was two squares, but together. It's an oblong, of course it is. So, what's that shape there, look? It's an oblong with two squares in it, sectioned by lines which make the square. There's another oblong there, the door. The lady's face is a circle, another cylinder that makes the lady up. There's another oblong there, there's another square there. Okay, be it, that's going to a vanishing point, but we're not talking about vanishing points. This shape here is basically an oblong, and another oblong makes up these fence posts. So, what I'm saying, if you look at the basic shapes of things, then there's only a few shapes in the world completely. And, um, um, oblong, squares, cylinders, cones. Can't think of any others. Can you think of any others? I'm sure there's another one. I can't think. My brain's all dead. I must be getting tired. I forgot one. Most important one. And I got paintings all around me with this shape on it. circle or a sphere. What is a sphere? A sphere is a circle that looks three-dimensional basically. I can't shade it in but you can get the, you get the gist of it. So we've got cone or triangle. We've got a cylinder or tube or whatever you want to call it. We've got a square uh, or a cube and then we've got um, an oblong and we've got a circle or a sphere. And that's it. That's all we really need to know. So just very basically, that's it. And I can go into depth and make things complicated, um, but I don't do that with my students. I will sit them down with a couple of dry mar uh, white markers in front of a piece of glass like this, and I'll say, I'll explain to them what a vanishing point is, and I'll say, find it, find those vanishing points. See how many vanishing points you can find, because I've already gone through it, and I know roughly how many is there. And, um, and then I'll say, 
How many shapes can you find? And go around, try all the, the triangles or, or cones with blue, and you know, find all the spheres with green, and find all the, the cone and uh, the um, uh, them as well with black. And it's quite it's over twelve o'clock midnight in the morning. I'm very tired, but. This is something they've been asked a lot of and I wanted to answer the question so I hope it's been of use. If it has been, then leave a comment in the comment box below and please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And um, well, thank you very much for watching. I'm Clive from Clive's Art. I hope this has been of use and maybe next time I will go in a little bit more depth and show you exactly what these things are. But do if you do it this way, you learn, you learn by doing. And, I've always believed in, I'm a self-taught artist, nobody taught me anything, I had to learn myself. So I've, in the past I've sat down with a paint, with a drawing or a picture and I've got a pencil and I've done this and I've learned myself by doing. You've got to do, you can't, people don't, we don't all digest information from books and people telling us what to do and things. You've got to do it. If you don't do it, you won't learn as fast. That's my principle in studying and in teaching is get the people to do. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'm Clive from Clive's Art and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye. Thank you very much for um, watching that episode. If you want to check out my links, please check out the links below and subscribe. Yes. If you haven't already subscribed, press that button there, the little red button you'll find underneath. If you can't find that button for any particular reason, scroll down to my descriptions and at the bottom you will see a link for subscriptions. And on the way, read the description itself and there are links there for my other playlists which you will find interesting because I've got well over 130 plus videos now, so there's plenty there to keep you going. I do question and answers etc etc I'm not covering that now but just check out the playlists please subscribe if you haven't already done so and thanks for watching this step by step lesson